of a housing project has been a constant journey. A journey that starts with the launch of the project and it goes through various stages of evolution leading to project completion and the most important element of consumer satisfaction. In hindsight, a whole lot of issues can surface where people differ with the project and it is pointed out that the project could have been done this way or that way. That is much easier to be done. But how do you conceptualize a project when you have just a barren land around you? How do you finalize a project which is a market differentiator in that given location? Today I am in Bangalore. It's Shokia Road of uh, Whitefield and I have come across a project called Codename East Lalwag. As you can see behind me, it's a project by Provident Housing. I am going inside the project. It is yet to be launched project and I will go inside. I will talk to them. How have they conceptualized this project? What are they going to do? How this project is going to be uh, uh, made uh, a market differentiator? Let's come inside. This looks like a large chunk of land. How big is the land and uh, how have you conceptualized it? See, the total land is 15 acres. Um, the question you are asking is, how do we conceptualize a project? Conceptualizing a project means project must have a character. End of the day, right? It is all about people who are going to live there. The people have needs, right? We need to keep those things in, uh, in, in, in mind while we are going to do that. So after that, there is a creative angle to that. The whole idea behind this project, this particular project is, there's already so much greenery around this and there is there are some characteristics of the site that I'm going to explain to you. It's just reminded us of Lalbagh in Bangalore. So that's why we called this as, codenamed it as East Lalbagh. So those elements are taken into consideration, right? Whether well, needs are on the other side, creative side and creative things are on the other side. So that is what we are going to do. Then that's how we conceptualize a project. So this total land is around 15 acres and this is going to have uh, 1,200 plus uh, units. Um, these are all, you know, two bedroom, three bedrooms. Um, it's again, it's a need based and what people want is what we are going to be looking at. Once you have just a barren piece of land with you hmm. and you have to conceptualize a new project, yeah. so what goes in, in your mind? Do you go for some market feasibility study? Uh, do you go for some uh, um, channel partner feedback? How do you conceptualize that? This is what the consumer is looking at. See, the market feasibility has to be done. The market feasibility is very, very, very important, right? Otherwise, because we are in business, we also got to sell. How do we, we have to look at the, 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 the customer needs and where they are and what they do. So, for example, this is around six kilometers. This site is around five and a half kilometers from Hope Farm Junction. And that is where we have the metro station, right? Metro station. Between this and the metro station, exactly there is a green uh, path where no development is there. So the natural progression of development uh, for Whitefield is this area, right? So in Whitefield, as you know, that there are already hundreds and thousands of jobs are generated in across the country. If you look at Whitefield, per capita income is much higher than any other place in a working population, if you look at it that way. So then we looked at what is happening. In, the, in Whitefield, the prices have gone up and it has come to a stage wherein people are looking for now it's turned it turned out to be a luxury market so we are looking at how do we be the bridge to that luxury that means it should be affordable but it should be we should be able to give everything a luxury project is going to give and that's the whole idea and for that we do the feasibility then we come up with what should be the size of the units and how many units to be provided and uh, what's the market size what's the market absorption so there are many number of such metrics that we look at and then we come up with the product. While walking through this road, I find this market to be a very cluttered property market. One specific reason why I came inside is that this project is in its uh, final stages of conceptualization. So what is your design strategy? Can you show me how have you designed this project to be a market differentiator? Because all the competing projects look like they are all the same. Yeah. So even if the, the first thing about the design means where are we going to build it? We're going to build on a piece of land. A piece of land has some characters. Come, let's go to the site and I will explain to you what those uh, characters are. 
Yeah, as we enter the site, now we are entering the site and uh, as you look at, look at this site, there is so much greenery that is there, right? You can also see some rocks here. I'll talk about the rock as we go forward. This looks more like a forest area. Yeah. How much greenery are you going to retain in this project? Yeah, it's beautiful, right? The, the, this greenery, even though it's the greenery, most of it is commercial eucalyptus, commercial crop. Uh, but we are going to be adding more trees than what it is here right now. See, as, a, as, as uh, you know, to explain that now how that greenery concept is taken, that probably I will have to call for the master plan. Hey, can, can somebody get a master plan, please? So this is where we enter. This is where we enter, we come here. And this is the circle that is kind of a roundabout that we see in Europe. And this is where the rain tree is going to be and the entire traffic is actually going to move around that so that there is no clogging of traffic anywhere around that. What we do is, um, this was planted some seven months back. So by the time the first resident comes here, it's going to take three and a half to four years. Right? By then, this will be a large tree. The whole idea here is we have to plant trees even before we go and dig the earth so that there is the grown-up trees. There are grown-up trees when people uh, coming to live here. So roughly how many trees uh, would be there in the project? There will be around uh, 2,000 trees are going to be there out of that almost 35 types of indigenous plants and some fruit bearing uh, plants are going to be there and so it's, it will be quite a bit of a green is going to be there as you can see in the master plan. See many of the amenities are like all the uh, modern buildings have all these amenities. But one specific thing that catches my mind is your rock garden. What precisely is your rock garden? Rock, to explain the rock garden, we have to go near the rock. Let's, I'll just let's, tell you that, you know, the where is the rock and yeah. what is it. And you ask for the very specific, almost five and a half acres of land is unbuilt around the rock. So when we go there, you will see what we are what Please come. So this is the rock that I was uh, talking about. I'm just wondering, how will you uh, retain these natural rocks here? This entire five acres that is going to be here, amenities are going to be carved out of this place. Amenities such as, you know, the tennis courts and basketball courts and other things that many of those amenities are going to be with this rock. And so that children and everybody else, once we clean up all the bush and other things, this comes out alive. Uh, and that's what they're going to enjoy. So this is our part of saying, keep the nature the way it is, still you do the development. Come, let's, let's keep going now. When you conceptualize a project like this, with so much of greenery, mm. then obviously it has to be a very low density project. Yeah, then this is a this is a low density project, where basically 70% of the total land area is going to be unused for construction. Only 30% of the area is used for construction. Um, so this is uh, 15 plus acres, as I said, that there is uh, so much of land for people to enjoy. What was your major challenge in terms of engineering design? See, when we design the, when we look at the engineering part of it, we always look at the terrain of the land, not only just relating to our land, it's also from beyond our property, what is the terrain? As you saw that when we came down and we we're coming down a gradient, which means that we need to take care of rainwater management and this kind of a valley zone which goes on the other side, so it's not going through our property, it's going on the side of our property and that we need to manage that and that has to be done during the planning itself and of course as part of the sustainability we do water retention, detention and, uh, and many number of those techniques that we use to make sure that uh, the rainwater harvesting and the rainwater to percolate into the earth and other things so all those things have to be thought through in the beginning itself and that's part of the surveying of the site, walking the site like this with you and, in, and understanding what it is and how to incorporate that into engineering design. Okay, what are the sustainability initiatives that you are taking in this project? So that's a very good question. See, as a listed company, we take our ESG initiatives very, very seriously. As part of sustainability during the construction, during the construction, we make sure that we use PPC cement and we use M sand so that you don't go and mine the rivers for the sand. And also we use recycled water for all the construction purpose. 
and we keep the noise and the sound under control during construction. These are all the sustainability initiatives, also the topsoil of the, uh, when we excavate, how to retain the topsoil and then bring it back when we are doing the landscaping. And these are some of the initiatives that we do. Then comes the air. Air, that is the, you know, what kind of landscaping that we do. You know, and for us, for human beings to live, oxygen is important. Oxygen comes from the plants. So the entire landscaping is designed under that air purification, how we, can, we are going to get good air to the people. So that's about uh, the landscaping. Um, and also the landscaping that we do or uh, do not take up a lot of water. That's very, very important. When we're talking about the water, that there is water from the rain and we retain water, uh, rainwater, and there is, um, you know, water ponds and also the rainwater harvesting system and so on and so forth is what we do with the uh, water. And then about the electricity, we have rooftop solar, even though in the vertical buildings, the rooftop, rooftop solar is not going to be much. We're almost like 55 kilowatts of power is going to be uh, generated here and that will be utilized for common area uh, purposes. Apart from electricity, air, we also have waste. Like waste has to be managed. When human beings are there, waste get generated. How do we segregate that uh, waste and how do we process that waste? And those things are all part of our uh, you know, sustainability initiatives. And this will be as a project, uh, will be uh, you know can will be rated at a very high level in a graph that if you will look at what kind of sustainability initiatives that we have done with so much of greenery and sustainable practices uh, will it reduce the cost of living for the residents in this project absolutely i mean that's one of the important outcomes of uh, you know having a strong uh, sustainability initiatives because once you are going to capture water and then you are not borrowing water you're not bringing water from outside similarly when we do the water recycling and use that water then that water again you know you're you're not bringing the water from outside similarly electricity electricity that if you are going to save around 55 kilowatts of power then you're utilizing it for the common area that means you have the savings there as well so sustainability initiatives will end up anyway saving the money in the long run for the people when you are using less resources then cost has to come down we have seen everything from uh, the standpoint of conceptualization planning but what matters to an end customer is construction quality right. what have we done for that See, uh, first of all, we take a lot of measures to get the quality at the highest level possible. And also, it, that's not enough. You know, we have to evidence that in the beginning itself to people that what kind of steps do we take. So we've got an, an experience center that we have built where I'm going to explain to you and with the modules that what we have built, they're going to explain to you and to, the, and to the people who are going to be coming and watching this one. So let's go there and look at it. So here we come, uh, this is where our experience, we call this as an experience center, where it starts. So you can see here all the details are written here. Uh, this is the staircase railing because you know when, when this is a fire escape staircase, when there's a rush, when this has to be strong to take care if there is any people uh, leaning on it. These are the, some of the uh, fixing details. You can look at the you know the tiles that what we use the cement tiles with even including these patterns that what we make so that people don't uh, slip over and you can look at the window and this is the safety element when you know when the longer windows are there people just don't trip over it and uh, so those are the kind of things so when you come to the exteriors uh, usually we do the stucco finish of the painting um, so the external painting usually have a good color and also just to make sure that if you look at this chajja, they come with a drip mold so that the water does not seep into the uh, window and it just drops it there. And this is about all the roof, how the terrace floor is uh, waterproofed, you know, with clay tiles, um, you know, in the way and fashion that we do. The details are all written here and how we use the GSM sheet and the different layers that are involved in making uh, roof waterproofing. And you can see the angles and, and wherever the tile and tile joints and where we have the bitumen finished so that there is no leakage. So when we come here, this is about the balcony. 
As you see, these are the balcony railings, the way it has been done, a sturdy balcony railings with this kind of you know, elevated place where the water does not come inside. And this is the tiles, the way we are going to lay the tiles. And this is the balcony door that is coming from inside. That is the, coming from inside where you have a sliding door. And so there is quite a number of, you know, the technical details are all there. And uh, each of our uh, salespeople are trained to explain that to people so that not only we do, we need to convey that to people so that they get the confidence uh, that, uh, that you know, it's built as per the quality. And how the plumbing lines, and you might have seen that there are these shafts which take these plumbing lines and electrical lines through and through. So this is about the plumbing shaft. And this is the window. This will be usually coming from a bathroom. So people can come here and come here and service the thing and how we are going to lay it and how they are held, structurally held so that they do not um, they do not get disturbed because of the water pressure and other things. So this is um, very, you know, these are all a checklist for us, right? It has to be the quality team uh, goes through this whole, uh, how it has been uh, uh, executed. After that, I have explained to you about this uh, plumbing shaft. Right about here, this is the wall which separates the plumbing and the shaft and the bathroom. And here is the bathroom. So here we clearly lay them lay out the plans as to which is the wet area, which is the dry area, where possibly that you can have your glass partition and how much space is there between the commode and how the angles are chamfered. Not only that, you know, where, you know, how the tiles are laid and what kind of waterproofing is used. All of those things will be explained here. Also, if you look at the plumbing lines coming down, that is the hot water, where the hot water comes and, uh, and also where the cold water comes and you know, where the mixing happens. And all of those things are uh, visibly shown to people so that it, it is, you know, it's nothing like explaining to people visually. And that is the reason why we do that. Um, and also it's good for us as, as, as engineers that uh, to reinforce in our own minds that what we are supposed to do and also to give that confidence to the customers. So when we come here, these are the internal finishes and this will explain to you about the doors. Not just explaining about the doors, how the doors are fitted, right, and what kind of material we use, the PU form that we use to fix it and how the architrave still fits in and the doors and you know the fittings and how the fittings are going to be and that is about uh, this area so that people will get what they want and if you look at it this is what they will probably be one among the few who give uh, you know uh, eight feet doors right this is the eight feet door that for the main door uh, we are one among the few developers who make sure that the entry is grander and this is about how we build um, you know, aluminum form work and, and, and how the rebars here, you can see here that this is all metal and uh, how the aluminum form work sits in like this is the aluminum form work and then we pour the concrete from the top and so that, that people understand that this wall is a concrete reinforced cement concrete wall. So that is the reason why this has been made but also we are showing how the electric pipes are embedded into it prior to actually uh, concreting. Very interesting stuff all these things. Um, here that we are talking about the electrical shafts, the electrical shaft doors and what kind of quality that we use and also here you know the column guards in the basement uh, this is you know for the car parking and you know, what kind of you know the, the road humps are laid and so this is part of your internal deliberation, internal research or you have taken learning from other countries or maybe other yeah, it's, I mean, learning happens from everywhere, right? Whatever are the best practices that are available, how to make it even better is our, our endeavor. And there is an engineering design department, design, that means it's not the architect, it's the engineering design department who continuously do this research and what kind of new materials and new fixtures are there in the market. So that is how we come up with this. You can see these kind of electrical lines, how the electrical lines are going to be. The only thing that you need to look at who is a quality developer and who is an ordinary developer, you just have to ask them to open the shaft. You open the shaft door and look at these electrical pipes, you will know that who has done quality work and who has not done quality work. So there you go Ravi, this is about the experience center. Uh, so there's a lot of hard work that goes behind even building these kind of towers and buildings. Malana, this has been very uh, interesting and I would say a serious discussion. Yeah. I don't want to digress it, but from where do you get your uh, passion and inspiration? Hey, it's work. We all have to live, right? And we have to live, so live with fun. 
it, you know, uh, live with passion. That's all. And have fun with whatever you're doing and probably make sure that everybody around you have fun. And so we are having a lot of fun building this. It doesn't look like a man on the job. It looks like a man who is committed to this kind of uh, uh, working with passion. So that's what is having fun. You know, if you're passionate and then the work becomes fun. Anyway, it has been very interesting discussion. Fantastic, fantastic Ravi sir. Thanks for coming down Thank and you, you flew all the way from Delhi to be here to be this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this has been project code name Ist Lalbagh, an upcoming project by Provident Housing. It's a 15 acre plus uh, land parcel having 1200 units of 2 BHK and 3 BHK specification. The best part of the project is that in a housing market where increasing land cost and construction cost is forcing the developers to compromise the open space and go for maximum uh, FSI usage, this is one project which can easily claim to be a low density project with 70% open spaces. The clubhouse itself is of 18,000 square feet and there are 35 plus amenities in this project. All in all, this project promises to come out as one of the best in, in the given segment, a project where the competing projects cannot match the kind of open area, the kind of amenities and, and the kind of thought process that has gone into this project. Ravi Sinha, Track to Reality.